shopping for fun? Want to win a Sony PlayStation 4, Apple AirPods, or free annual passes to Via Aquarium? Show us your fish face. The best selfie wins. Visit Via Aquarium, 93 West Campbell Road, Schenectady. For more details, go to viaaquarium.com and show us your fish face. Welcome back to the Chapters Wrap, where Unity Diversity meet one chapter at a time. And I have an outstanding panel of people here. First of all, from the Boys and Girls Club in the New York area. And they're all here for a reason. But we have Mel Campos from the um, Boys and Girls Club in Mount Vernon. And we have uh, Maria Santor from the Schenectady program. And then we have Chris Davis from Kipps Bay, who's also in the Bronx here. All from the New York area. But you're all here for a reason. Mel, why don't you explain what that reason is? We're here for the New York State Youth of the Year competition. Um, we have 27 candidates from all New York State, from the end of Long Island to Niagara Falls and Jamestown and everything in between. And we will be selecting one youth to represent the state of New York, to be the spokesperson for the Boys and Girls Clubs in New York State, but also to represent New York State in the regional competition and hopefully the national competition. So Maria, why is this important to have, you know, programs come together and acknowledge young people like this? Well, first of all, I mean, our young people are amazing. And I think we don't tell our young people that enough. Um, I think there's some uh, question out there as to, you know, the, the way young people are today. And the kids are just um, well-deserving, well-rounded leaders. Um, you know, team, teamwork is a huge part of what they do, and they give back to the community. I think it's important for us to show the great kids that are out there. Right. And Chris, uh, you're from the Bronx area. Why is this important for you to be here, but also um, the, the person, the young person that you brought along with you? Um, because Boys and Girls Club had a, a, a profound impact on my life, so um, the, the, the best way for me to give back and pay it forward was to join the Boys and Girls Club. Um, as anything, volunteer. Um, currently, I'm a team director, um, so I have an opportunity to really gauge um, and engage um, our youth and make sure that they they have an opportunity to do whatever it is that they want to do and become whoever it is that they want to become. Um, so I think that's very vital um, into the, the the work that we do. Right. Now, before the show, you were talking about that. You stepped away from the club or the program for a little bit, but you had this drawer, this calling to come back. Why? Yes. I, I know you mentioned that you, were, when you were younger, you kind of grew up with yes. the program. Why did you want to come back? Yes, when I was a kid, um, I, I always went to the Boys and Girls Club, and I played the sports. I played ping pong, foosball, and, and as I started to grow older, I started to become more of a, a young man and not to go away to college. Um, but I did step away from the organization, but a calling, so it was something that woke me up in the middle of the night that, that, really, that really had an you know, impact on um, what I wanted to do um, in life. And I wanted to leave that legacy, and I wanted to come back and join the Boys and Girls Club and, and really have an impact on um, the kids today. Now, Mel, I know we, you've been on the show many times, so thank you for coming back and thank helping for organizing me. all this. But you had a similar story too. I mean, you, when you were young, you grew up in the Boys and Girls Club, and you kind of never left. And uh, you're there, but you're you're really holding things together, not just Mount Vernon, but throughout each program. Well, I was a kid at the club, and the club where Chris works oh, okay. is the club All that right. I went to. Um, right. When I was a kid at the club, Steve, I had no idea that this is what I'd be doing when I grew up. Um, the plan was to go and make a lot of money in corporate America and working in corporate America I realized I didn't enjoy it. Um, so I came back into this work with the thought that I was going to do it for one year, <laughs> give back for one year right. and then go back and find the corporate job. Um, that was over 35 years ago and here I am. Wow, that's amazing. And Maria, you've been in the program for about 24 years now. Yeah. As a woman, why is it important for you as a role model to be that for, for men, for boys, but also for girls? I mean, it's about being who you are, and it's about showing leadership and, and being that role model. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club for me, though, um, I had both of my kids at the Boys and Girls Club, 
and I got to say that it was important for them to also meet different staff members and build relationships with uh, with them because you know it's it, they have somebody else to talk to um, so I've always been there um, to make sure that you know I have my ear to the ground and whatever kids need but the Boys and Girls Club really for me and my children they really help raise my children as well with some amazing role models. So you're from the Schenectady area, obviously the program is connected to Mount Vernon and the Bronx. What are some collective challenges that you guys may face that are out there? Well, challenges, uh, there are many challenges. Like one challenge for all of us is making sure that we have the resources to provide the programs that are needed in our communities. Some people take it for granted that, oh yeah, no, the money just comes. It doesn't just come. You gotta work real hard for it. Mm. Uh, another challenge on, on a slightly different level is teens. Um, teens are our most challenging and vulnerable population. And we have to make sure that we provide an environment where teens want to be. Because the statistics will tell you that teens that come to the club and come to the club regularly fare better in life than those that don't. Right. And it's very important that we have a good strong team program that teens want to be a part of and tell their their friends to come and be a part of it. Marie, what would you say? I, I think he hit it right on the nose. I mean, to really have a place where teens can do those things that they like to do, whether it's hang out. Um, and we really have to listen to our teens. That's the difference. Um, you know, our teens in Schenectady told us what they wanted. Uh, I'm going to put a little plug in because we're very excited about uh, the almost 40,000 square foot building that we are building nice. uh, very shortly. It'll be done um, in October. Um, and we really designed the, the teen center with the teens. They told us what they wanted and that's what we're putting in there. Um, it's about giving them the opportunity to be who they are and also provide them with anything that they need. Um, in a in a way that is fun as right. well because it's all about fun. Right. I love what you said. It's very empowering because what they want. It's all about the kids. And if they if you give young people things that they really not invested in, they're not going to utilize right. it. So what you're saying is very important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kids will come for those caring relationships. You really need to build a relationship. I think your teens probably love you and really respect you so uh, this is one of our staff members that probably has some amazing impact with those yeah, teams thank so thank you thank you so chris what are some of the challenges you guys see in the bronx um just the, the outside forces that um that may be um the, the challenges from from gang violence and sometimes mm -hmm. even at home right. in, in the house and um the, the boys and girls club we, we can do but so much but um, I think the programs that we have in place are engaging programs where the teens can actually come in and, and, and be themselves. And I think it's very important that that, that takes place um, in our clubhouse, in all clubhouses um, throughout New York and beyond. Um, but the, the outside forces um, would definitely have to be a, a huge challenge for us and um, a, a way, f figuring out a way to um, to make sure that they get what they need, right. social, socially and emotionally, mm -hmm. um, because I think that's, that's, that, that goes on building the whole person right. um, and, and actually coming back to the clubhouse and giving back. Oftentimes our kids will turn 18 or um, get to a certain age, go away to college, and you see them come back and give back to the clubhouse, whether it be time, money, energy, and um, you can see that the clubhouse, the Boys and Girls Club, had a profound, um, you know, impact on their lives. So, yeah. Well, you know, I was just reading a recent study that it said 28 social media with young people, 28% of all social media is negative. That means 72%. Um, I mean, 20% is positive. 72% is negative, and that really stuck with me because pe kids nowadays have to when that bell rings from school. They're on the computer and then they're looking at what other people are saying about them or different things. But the Boys and Girls Club is not about computers, it's about hands on experience. Mel, talk about some of the after school programs that uh, pro the programs do have. Well, um, our after school program, which runs from 3 to 6 30, Monday through Friday, um, when the kids come in, the first hour of the day is dedicated to doing homework, power hour, uh, where the kids get homework assistance. Um, 
we ask people to volunteer to help the kids because the more one-on-one -on -one attention they get, the better they do. Um, we also have the gym, which is full of recreational activities. We have the game room um, where kids, we, don't, we call it social recreation, where kids learn about getting along because one of the negative effects of social media is that kids don't know how to talk to each other right. um, anymore. So the game room, they, they play with each other and interact with each other. We have a very strong STEM program um, where kids who had no interest in the sciences are now looking forward to the next project. Um, we have a program called NCADD, which is a drug prevention program. And essentially what it is, is it's telling, it's teaching kids how to deal with anger and disappointment. Right. Um, so the kids have a full day at the club. Um, just this um, Friday, the New York City Kids Project came to the club and did a puppet show on diversity, inclusion, and respect. Uh, we did it for our younger kids. We're planting seeds. I mean, that, that's what we do, plant seeds and hope that it takes and that the kids grow up. And, and it's working. I mean, we see our kids graduating from high school, going to college, being successful, and coming back. Ready for fun? Want to win a Sony PlayStation 4, Apple AirPods, or free annual passes to Via Aquarium? Show us your fish face. The best selfie wins. Visit Via Aquarium, 93 West Campbell Road, Schenectady. For more details, go to viaaquarium.com and show us your fish face. The show you are watching has been produced by SACC.TV. SAC TV is a not-for-profit organization that provides educational programming seeking to enrich communities by producing shows on culture, science, health, the arts, and more. SAC TV is member-driven, which means that we rely on donations, grants, underwriting, and volunteers to deliver quality content. SAC.TV has been in operation continually since 1974 and currently operates a full-time studio in Rotterdam, New York. In recent years, SAC.TV has produced over 500 community-driven programs that are all available to view free to the public on www.sac.tv, on demand 24 hours a day. SAC.TV also airs shows on local television, channels such as WNYT, my for Albany, with programs like Do You Know the Muffin Man, Caught in the Crossfire, Scene TV, Tune in to Wellness Today, and The Janice Thompson Show. Check your local programming schedule or www.sactv for times and dates. In SAC.TV's mission to connect and inform communities and individuals, every week we're producing new shows. To be able to provide this service, we are in need of your help. There's a lot of ways you can help SAC.TV and in turn, help your community. Visit www.sac.tv. There you can click on Donate and select the contribution level of your choice. You can also help SAC.TV by sponsoring an ongoing program, volunteering behind the scenes, or even producing your own show. And as always, if you enjoy what you've seen, visit us on YouTube and Facebook. Subscribe, like, share, and pass the word around. For more information and to see the latest shows, visit www.sac.tv or contact us as director at sac.tv or by phone at 518 831-9145. For now, back to our program and stay tuned for more great shows. It's amazing. You talk about planting seeds and uh, I know the, the Youth Award 
um, is an annual award. Talk, talk about the history about that, because I know you all have one person representing each program, and we're going to go into how that person was chosen, but the history behind um, the event that's uh, recently held. At, uh, well, the, the Youth of the Year program has been going on since 1947. Wow. I can't add up how many years that is, <laughs> but it's a long time. And it gives each organization to highlight and showcase the work that they do through one of its youth. Um, that youth becomes the spokesperson for that organization for that year. And if they're fortunate enough to be named State Youth of the mm. Year, they become the spokesperson for youth in the state of New York. Um, it's a very serious competition. Um, the young people have to put in a pretty extensive application. They go through an interview process. They go through judges. They have to compete against other young people in their clubhouse. And we ask the judges to choose the young person who can best represent young people in the organization. And it's very important that it is a completely impartial process. So anyone who's closely affiliated with the club or knows the kids cannot be a judge. The judges are people who are attached to the club, but are, don't work directly with, with the kids. And it, it, it's a fabulous process because the judges walk away uh, saying, wow, I didn't know that this was what you produced. Wow. Now you all have a representative from each program, so I want you to talk a little bit about that person you've chosen, and so our folks, our viewers out there in the, all of New York can get an idea of who, they're, who they are. So Chris, why don't you start off? Um, our Youth of the Year member, his name is Malik Lopez, very passionate um, guy, um, a young man, very vibrant, very creative, um, and, and willing to give back. Um, he, he started at the clubhouse about three years ago. Um, his younger sibling, his little brother, used to attend, um, he attends the club. And he was just dropping off his brother at the club. And a, a member of the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club said, hey, you should join the clubhouse. And at that second, he, he joined. Um, not only did he join, he made a, he made a, a, a huge, he, he went off, he volunteered wow. um, in an ice skating rink, teaching kids how to ice skate. He even joined our Keystone Club. Um, and, and beyond. Um, he's also, he is the president of our Keystone, Keystone Club. So he, he's very involved in the club and um, whenever he has, and also he has time to be a kid, right. you know, we, and that's very important as well as he's a serious guy. His ac academics is, um, he has a B plus average wow. um, and is going to go up by the end of this year um, on track for, for college. Um, his major, he would like to major in nursing. So he has a mission and he has goals and he has things to tackle in his life. And um, Malik Lopez is, he's, and he's also a funny guy. Um, and he's, he's cool to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I wish I was his age. Mm -hmm. So I can hang out with him. We all do. But, um, <laughs> you kind of look like him. Yeah. Don't yeah. just say yeah. how old you are, but how old is Malik? Malik is 16. Okay. Malik all right. is 16. All right. uh, and just, just, his story will touch everybody, and um, that and that's who he really is. Wow, Maria. Well, we're really excited. Our Youth of the Year is Talia Mayor this year. She is a junior at Schenectady High School. Mm. She's 16 years old. Uh, she's been coming to the club since she was six. Um, her sister came to the club. The one thing that uh, Malia uh, or Talia talks about all the time is. Um, her, the STEM project, uh, the STEM uh, program that we we had over at our Steinmetz unit, uh, we brought some volunteers in from RPI, and they really made a difference. And she decided that she is going into uh, that field, engineering field. Um, she is someone that is uh, amazing in in all aspects. She's 58. Uh, ranked 58th out of 478 um, students in her class um, and she is a very good representative. I wanted to read one thing that she said because sure. I think it's really important so let me put sure. on my glasses. It says, the club gave me a chance. It, uh, it has been there to celebrate my success and to help me learn from my mistakes. My club is my support system. My club is my family. That's, that gives me chills. And that's what the club is all about. 
But you, you talk about family, it's so important because there's no distinction. I mean, when, when someone feels that way about anybody, but especially at the Boys and Girls Club, when it's family, mm -hmm. it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. 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 So well done. Mel? Yeah. Um, our candidate is Marissa Glaze. She is 15 years old. Um, Marissa came to this country four years ago from Jamaica. Um, did not know what was what she was coming to. Um, her family came for a better life. And Marissa, I remember the day she walked through the club. She was a very shy, um, quiet young woman, um, but very curious. She's looking around to see what was going on. And in four years, she has evolved into a bright, beautiful young woman um, who is very passionate about the environment very passionate about gender equality issues. Um, she's an honor student as well as a terrific actress. She just played Diana Ross in the Revelator's um, production of Motown um, and she was outstanding. Nice. Um, Marissa is going places. I, I also think that the, uh, you know, each youth of the year um, for their or respective uh, clubhouses, you know, sometimes you're in your own clubhouse. You don't realize the breadth uh, of how big this organization is. I mean, you're, like for us, it's all about Schenectady. Right. But when she goes out and she meets people from Kips, uh, Kips Bay and mm -hmm. all over New York State, uh, I know our youth of the year always comes back like, I just didn't realize it was that big, you know. So that is extremely meaningful. And, you know, a lot of these youth of the year stay in touch. Mm -hmm. You know, they become friends. I mean, they have common goal. Right. And uh, that's what we want. So it lasts a lifetime. You hear Mel and Chris talking about, you know, their life, you know, in the Boys and Girls Club and now serving for that. I mean, it, and you're there 24 years, so it lasts a complete lifetime. And, the way the healthcare system is now and the way families um, have difficulty getting mental health services, which leads to other problems in the society, the Boys and Girls Club is really a go-to program for people to get that additional support in an out-of-the-box kind of way, but also in, in a restructuring leisure time is big, you know, because sometimes these kids can't even get to a game or, or, or a function. How important is structuring leisure time and doing things outside of the program itself? Social skills are really important. I mean, you know, the one thing about Boys and Girls Club, we talk about the game room all the time. The game room is sort of the heart um, where kids, uh, you know, learn how to win. They learn how to lose. They learn how to communicate. They, they learn, uh, you know, conflict skill, uh, resolution skills. Um, the game room, um, to me, is extremely important because that's really where everything starts right. and when I think of a boys and girls club that's what I think of a game room I mean it's that's pretty traditional right. um, and we you know that's where they start learning the rules that's where they start learning you know even a, even a pool game how do you play right. um, that's really important I mean for us that's that's key right. Chris um, it starts on Mondays in our teen lounge. Mm -hmm. um, we, on Mondays to start the week, we don't pull out any games. We don't pull out any any Xboxes or PS4s. No, it's a time for when they come in and actually talk about their weekend mm -hmm. and actually share. Hey, what did you do this weekend? Um, I hung out with a few friends or I hung out with my family. So it starts with those connections there, and it's very strategic upon not only myself but my staff um, to really you know be to be you know mindful of these things and. Um, to really also sit down and build a staff and um, youth relationship um, and really talking and expressing themselves and it's okay to be upset too as well right. and it's okay we can we can talk about it and having those different outlets is very important. Amazing, Mel? I think it's really important that we expose kids to different things. Um, you know we all have our comfort zone and our box that we stay in Part of what we try to do is to get them outside the box, um, mm -hmm. get kids to go to the theater, um, get them to go to different sporting events, going out to a dinner, mm -hmm. um, you know, other than McDonald's. Right. Um, you know, there's a whole world out there that many of our kids are not exposed to. So one of the things that re that's really big and important for us is to give them opportunities to experience different things. Right.
no yes. point because nowadays families don't even eat together. Right. And and statistics again show the more families that eat together cognitively, that young person is going to have more growth than than the next person that's not. So mm -hmm. what you're doing is amazing. It's it's a calling. I mean, you, you mentioned the word calling before. It's amazing because these programs, some of them are going by the wayside. I personally know of different situations that have that struggle within the community to withhold their uh, program. So what you're doing is amazing, and what these youths are doing, you're, you're promoting, this is our future. This is our future that really is representing um, themselves through the Boys and Girls Club. Mel, how can people get a hold of you? Okay, people can get a hold of me through my email, Melvin C underscore 2001 at yahoo.com, our website, bgcmvny.org. Or you can call the Boys and Girls Club. We actually answer the phone. 914 668 9580. And that's Mel Vern and Maria. How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, my email is mcentor, C E N T O R, at BGC Schenectady. S C H E N E C T A D Y. I'm glad you spelled that. I know we're, we're having that conversation. Or they can call 518 374 4714. They can get a hold of us and we also pick up the phone. There we go. Two for two. Chris. Well, you can get in contact with us on our website, kipsbay.org. Um, and also, my email is chris.davis, D A V I S, at kipsbay.org. And really quick, 30 seconds or less, um, where do you see your programs um, going in the future for 2019 and beyond? I mean, where do you, you mentioned. Uh, I, we are so excited right now uh, for Schenectady's youth, for our youth. We've never, um, we've never built a, a brand new state-of-the-art facility like this. We are, the sky's the limit for us. Um, we have such supportive community as well, and that, that is, that's really what helps, as well as our support from our school system, from Schenectady County, and I, I just think that, that there's so much that we're going to be able to do, not us, our youth, yes. and that's really what it's all about. Yes, yes. It's, it's all about our youth. Chris, real quick. Um, in the next year, I hope to gain more participants um, so the teens can actually see um, what we do here. And um, the, the sky is the limit, you know, yeah. like you said. And um, it's, it's, it's powerful when you join the Boys and Girls Club and you don't never want to leave. All right, Mel, final word. Well, I, I'm inspired by Schenectady and what they're doing. We have outgrown our clubhouse, Steve, and I would love for the next time that I'm on your show to be able to say that Mount Vernon has broken ground on a new building. But in the meantime, we want to serve more teens mm -hmm. and make a difference in kids' lives, but we want a new building. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on The Wrap. We're talking Boys and Girls Club, and uh, tune in next week for another show of Chapter Wrap.